There's such different skills hosting and acting. Because I actually moved out here to be an actress. Okay. And I cannot audition. I practically black out in a room. I get so nervous. It is so, it is all so nerve wracking. But how do you so get much. past that as an actor? I don't think you do. You I think, really don't? I think you, um, I mean, I think you dive into whatever choices you made for this character, for this scene, and yeah. you uh, hope that the, the demands of that story that you're trying to tell outweigh the nervous demand to be liked. Never gonna happen in my world. Right. Never. Well, I feel the same thing. I mean, you want to be good, and how do you right. forget about how much you want them to like you and think you're great, right. but dive into the character. They yeah. just want to see the work. They kind of just want to see the work. You're right. Yeah. Like, it doesn't matter. Yeah. You can be the most charming person in the world if you can't dive in, and we don't believe you in that moment. Which is why people who kind of suck still get work, because they're good, and we want to see the you talent. You know the people that suck in Hollywood that get, There's only a get few, jobs? And I hear about them, <laughs> and I have been lucky enough not to have to work with them. But you hear stories about certain diva actors or actresses, yeah. and they continue to work, and it's kind of a bummer, because I'm someone who thinks that not only is the work important, and of course it is crucial that you're good and you convey that character and story and believability, but that the experience of making the thing is as important and that we have a great time doing it. Have you ever had a diva moment? Because you kind of come across to me as the guy that your, your character on Royal Pains is so likable. You're so likable. Have you ever had a diva moment that you can share? I, you know what? I have a couple, I've had a couple. Really? And they're weird. The executive producer, uh, Michael Rausch and Andrew Lencheski are our creator. They're my boys and we've lived this six years of Royal Pains together. That I watched every episode and never miss one. Thank I, you very much. She really has, by the I way. I really love it. Because I don't believe, I didn't believe her the first time no, she said you, it. No, hey you guys, did, but I rapped for we're you. Turning, we're turning, we're breaking the fourth wall right now. Let's break that wall. Um, I rapped for you the first time you came in. I believe I rapped for you as well. You rapped back. No, but here's the funny thing. Have you rapped since? Because I rapped since. I have. Who did you rap for? Because um, I'm going to drop so names. So I'm going to share an inside thing. Is that okay, Lynn, if I share? Um, the upfronts were enormous this year because they did all the cable NBC. networks. It was 3,000 people oh in the Javits God. Center in New York, and I did a rap. Uh, how did it begin? We, like, took, we harnessed all our instruments and had this epiphany take our platforms and portfolio and call it symphony. We'll be your Leonard Bernstein when we conduct. We'll reach the whole community on behalf of your product. <gasps> um, I didn't even throw it on a beat for you. I know. How did it, it was, go? It went amazing. It went so well that Steve Burke, the head of the entire conglomerate of Comcast, um, asked me to make a video, which I then did, which we shot in Nice, where we were shooting, and Saint Tropez. The the I was in the back of a powder blue uh, Bentley convertible wrapping to a helicopter that was filming me. No. Um, yes. So you know what it feels like to be TI. But I want to ask you some questions about Royal Pains because I really am I'm obsessed with the show. <laughs> hey, what are you guys waiting online for? Isn't your father signing books inside? Yeah. Huh? He's supposed to be. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hi, Dad. Nice. Hi. Well, it looks like you three sorted out whatever was happening. We did. So I love the show. I love Royal Pains. Never miss an episode, ever. Okay. Never. Never. Who are we talking See the Jew to I have right in me? now? I love it. Never missed an episode. My nails are done. It's like they're like butter. I want you to fill in the blank. I would watch any movie or TV show with blank in it. Okay. Uh, got it. Any movie or TV show with um, delicious food. Really? Yeah. Your, your like I just movie? saw Chef and that John Favreau movie. Oh, how was that? It. Was it, it was good? It was amazing. Really? So. Are you an inner, do you have a foodie in you? Like, are you? Uh, a... Not really. I'm more like there's two words. There's gourmand. Gourmand is a guy who eats with great taste. I'm just a fat shit who likes to eat <laughs> a lot. See, I always say I'm kind of just like I'm very much because I'm a, from a small town. Right. I got a lot of. WT in me, a lot of white trash. Uh huh. So I, I've never met Mr. So you like, like a fast food. Oh, I'm a drive through queen. Okay. I That's don't... a great date to me. Um, okay, so let's talk about the Kardashian effect. Okay. Okay. Okay, they're Season on finale. Royal Pains, Chloe and Scott Wait. in the Hizzy. In the Hizzy. By the way, this was such a coup for our show to get them. Did you have to call Scott Lord Disick? I did not have to. <laughs> I was so glad. I was 
actually like in shock when I saw that that's the name of his Instagram thing, Lord of the Manor. He was the Lord of the Manor. Whatever he and is. And he was in your manor. But by the way, your show. he was so cool. Was he was he? so nice. Chloe too. I made the most of my time with the Kardashians. And we're now, I consider them somewhat friends, like in the maybe Hollywood he way. But we were, they were so sweet and we had a great time filming and I was, Paulo Costanzo and I both were trying to put them at ease. The next day I'm having lunch in Southampton with Paulo and I email Chloe and Scott like, yo, having lunch in Southampton, so come up. with them? I don't think they did. Okay. I'm just trying to sound young. <laughs> young Hollywood. To, it's not working. I totally okay. called you out Lose on the yo. Got it. Um, just wondering how you text what you're eating right. whole Yeah, I got nothing going. Okay. I have no cool Need help with hip that too. Okay. patter whatsoever. All right. So I'll just talk like a human being. <laughs> um, but I, anyway, I, said, I told them we were having lunch and they were like, come over. I was like, are we going to be on camera, come over, or just come over? And he's like, actually, we're shooting. Uh, but we'll do that for five minutes and then, you know, we'll just tell them we're taking a break and that. So as Paul and I go over to their insanely gorgeous house in Southampton on Nauseating. the water. Okay. Mason's there, Courtney's there, we're all was hanging. Was Penelope there? The um, daughter? I didn't meet Penelope. Probably sleeping. No, but I met okay. Mason. He was adorable. So it's not a stage kid. He really exists? He really exists. <laughs> okay. He's a very okay. adorable kid. He's so cute. And he's, he's good so with cute. the Legos, and he showed me his whole Lego collection. Um, so but we did a show? Uh, well, we we were on camera for like 45 minutes. Oh my god. We never took a break. We entered on camera. We left on camera. The funniest moment for me, because it was all fun, and I was playing with Mason, and Paula was doing crazy stuff with Scott. Uh, they have three cameras. One's following him. Two are on me and Courtney. But I didn't realize when you're on a reality show, like they are living their lives. They really are. So there's this moment where I'm, I'm like all into Mason and his Legos and I'm playing and I turn and if you're a Kourtney Kardashian, just be, you're like, be on your phone. Pretend you're on your phone. I'm like, yeah, that's such a great Lego. And I turn I'm to selfie. her and I'm like, and she's just literally doing that. Selfie? Like looking at her phone, not selfie. No, okay. that's Nikki Novak alone <laughs> in her that's house. Kim. That's Kim, she don't hold But up. the camera's just on me, like you could see through the veneer, like, oh, you're just on your phone right now. So Jill, is it Jillian that plays your- uh, Jillian Alexi. I didn't know if it was Gillian or Jillian. Plays Charlotte. Who, I thought she was really blind. She plays that off, pulls that off so, I, w I had to look and Google and see if she really- That's she, awesome. Yeah, no, I no. mean, that's a major clue yeah. for an actress yeah. that you believed it so much. So I know in this episode, she hears, cause she's, was blind on the show, um, she hears the sound of Chloe's voice and goes, that's a Kardashian. Yes, yes. And freaks out and gets excited. Yes. Whose voice could you hear in a restaurant that you would go <gasps> and know their voice and be excited that they were there? Um, hmm. If uh, I watch Survivor, so if Jeff, if I heard, come on in, guys, I would know Jeff Probst's voice anywhere. So is it like your dream to have him like put, take the torch? If, and, like, it's put his it dream. Out? It's my dream not to put it out, but to bring it in. <laughs> and I won Survivor, okay. or just to say, come on in. Come on in, Mark. Wait, have they oh. done a Survivor Celebrity Edition? Never. Why is that? Oh my not God, happened? Jeff Probst. I, I feel like they've avoided that because that would be jumping the shark or jumping the Probst. So um, the finale is coming up. Promise me, there's another season, right, coming up? I wish I could promise you that, <sighs> but we are all very optimistic okay. that the network will be smart enough to keep us around for one more amazing season. Of course they will. We feel very good about it, but Seven we don't know. Seven is a know. very good number. I agree. It's a great number. It's a magic number. So let's talk about the finale. Okay. So I just want to say that, again, the writers, what they do so brilliantly in our show is they manage to resolve certain issues, like in this past week's episode, we saw that Viviana, who Jeremiah has been sort of courting, is moving away. I know everybody's been wondering, would Jeremiah and Divya get together? But we're gonna wrap that storyline up in a very fun way, where we see that he's actually grown and evolved, and it actually hints at a direction we could go in season oh, seven. Oh, really? With him. That would be very fun <gasps> to watch. Oh, really? I'm trying to think of what that would be. Um, I'm not gonna tell you. I always think with him, I always think, would somebody actually go out with that kind of personality in real life? Just because he is so awkward. He's so awkward, but like right. you said, come a long way and... But don't you feel like every girl who's dated the bad boy who made them feel like crap finally comes around to the fact that they just no. want a good guy they can rely on? No. No, they want the guy <laughs> they're gonna fix till they're in the Yes, grave. but he's kind of the guy you could fix too because he's so awkward. Right. 
So All right, well, it could work I, th that I think way. that's a better okay. fix. Okay, so that's Jeremiah. Okay, okay. what's um, happening with um, Evan R. Lawson? Evan and Paige have resolved their issues. Yes, They're I kind of liked when they were fighting. It was good, right? Yeah. Well, the, it was all very of, realistic. All of last season, yeah. they had a lot of tension. A lot of that. And the first year of marriage can bring some yeah. of that because you, th you thought that's it was, what was so you real were, about you come it. out of the honeymoon phase and into the into real life. Um, there's been some stuff about Hank Med because Ray, the mobster, was running things and investing money in the company, and that didn't go so well when Paige almost got shot when she was in the room with. By the Ray. way, when he took. Um when he took Paolo, Paolo, Paolo. Paolo into the woods. Yeah. You, that scene. Scary. So good. He's so good. It was so Sopranos. Um, so Sopranos. <laughs> Our show is a melange it of is. many different, it is. different elements. Yes. Um, but he's also always felt a little left out by my relationship with Boris because that's kind of my intrigue world that I never let Evan into. Um, we address that issue in the finale in a great way because I, at the end of the last episode, rejected Boris's proposal. Rejected, and I was proposal. like, what are you doing, what Hank? What are you doing, Hank? You're the last vote. It's unanimous. Go with the flow. I hear you. It's a great opportunity. It's annoying. And maybe I'll reconsider <laughs> it, and maybe I won't. But right. you're going to have to watch the finale um, to find out. And I think that we need to cut so you can tell me what's really <laughs> happening in the finale. <laughs> um, I have hinted at everything. I'm going to tell you everything. Are you? Now. Cut it. <laughs> Cut it. Cut it. Cut it. You I know you a like to. A little beatbox, <laughs> something, Nikki? <laughs> Hanging with Nikki Novak. Hanging yeah. with Nikki Novak. Giving yeah. a little to her left and then taking it back. Wait, why am I completely uncoordinated? I don't know. Right? That was kind of <laughs> weird, but now we send it out to no producers, nobody in the room who's working here. Bring it back to your left hand. And then we go out on this app.